Hey up boys and girls, welcome to another exciting edition of this awful railway channel. So this is a little bit of an update about what's going on. But first, a direct reply to Main Train Eastport, who seems to think he's Lord of the Galaxy. He is incorrect. I am Lord of the Galaxy. And just for uh, scale's sake, where are we? What is something for to give you an idea of how big this thing actually is? There we go. Here we have a HO scale Volkswagen Beetle. There you go. That's a big one. Galaxy, of course, being the chocolate of choice for any, any self respecting British railway modeler. There we are. So over to you, mate. Nice one. Anyway, let's crack on with this nonsense. As you can see, we've started by laying some of this concrete fencing which obviously I've designed myself with the uh, the software that I use. We're going to landscape this area using PVA glue and regular tea bag tea as well as some other bits and pieces as well. Let's crack on. Alright so we start by pasting the whole area with neat PVA glue and then we're going to use a nice plastic spreader. You can use cardboard or even your finger or whatever you have to hand really. Mine's a village replacement speaker's plaque that I was sent by a Monday Club member from the Jenny Kirk um, Facebook page from the Monday Club live stream that they have on every Monday from I think it's 7pm onwards. And make sure you get this PVA all over the place into every little nook and cranny. Try not to miss any areas, otherwise your tea leaves won't stick properly. And again, I'm just using, this happens to be Yorkshire tea, the best tea. You can use whatever tea you want. I'm only using Yorkshire tea because I'm rich and famous. Obviously, if you're a bit less affluent, I recommend using cheap tea from the uh, off license. As you can see, I've literally ripped the bag open and I'm just going absolutely nuts with it. You want to get a good covering. I think I used until about six bags, maybe seven. Just spread it around. Don't worry too much about any spillages or tea in areas that where it shouldn't be. Once it's all dry, you can just brush it away and use a hoover. But make sure it's dry first, otherwise you will absolutely ruin it. Then dampen it down with a little bit of uh, washing up liquid and cold water. Spray it on so it's nice and damp. That'll stop the tea from running away when you eventually apply the PVA and water mix. I tend to use about 40% PVA and the rest water. Then you just apply it with a little applicator bottle or however you want to do it really, but I found the applicator bottles work the best. Gloopy, gloppy, splotchy, splotchy. This is the best bit, really. 
I uh, have no idea why, but this is my favourite part. Blathering everything in PBA is very, very satisfying. Now while it's all wet still, this is the perfect time to apply your dry flux. I'm using, uh, I think it's Woodland Scenics Burnt Grass Fine Turf. Just sprinkle it on from a great height when we're just trying to define where the landscape is. We don't want to blanket it because we want some of that dirt and earth to show through because this is a bit of wasteland, don't forget. Then you can start to add uh, different grades and coarseness of flock. This is a uh, World War Scenics one. Uh, it's uh, quite a nice one actually. It's, uh, it seems to clump really well because it's made from foam. It doesn't dry up like the Jarvis Scenics one does. Obviously that's, that would be a sawdust variant. The uh, World War Scenics one is foam, so it absorbs the PVA better, it just lasts longer. And again, we're just getting all this overgrowth, if you will, into all the little nooks, crannies and gaps. And then we're just spraying down again with more water and washing liquid. Then we're going to stick the fence in. Now there's not even any extra glue because it is literally being splodged into a base of wet PVA and sticky flop, so it's going to hold it up pretty nicely. Then going over again with the PVA wall mix just to hold down that larger scattering of flock, keep things in place a little easier, a bit better, a bit more efficient. Don't forget to do the bits behind the wall as well, even though the camera can see them too much. It's nice just to know that it's there. There, we're just going to have a bit more tea, just to make the, uh, the earth a bit more um, obvious, if you will, make it stand out a bit better. And of course, once all this is dry, we're going to go over it again with weathering powder, just to even out the tones a little bit, make it a bit more contrasted and what have you. And then finally for now we're just going to add some bushes and weeds with lichen. I forget which one this is. I think I actually got this from a garden centre. But any lichen will do. And we're just going to shove this, get it all in there, nice and tightly packed. That's the bottom of the, uh, the container yard there, so it's not going to get as much attention as the rest of it, so it gets a bit overgrown. That's it. Things we're going to add later on, hopefully a bit of debris, a bit of rubbish. I'd like to add maybe a cameo scene with a burnt out car being stolen. I'm not sure which one I should use. Something from the 
mid to late 90s maybe maybe an old clock top banger I don't know what do you think I should use in any case I'll probably make that a separate video I have to take a perfectly nice model and absolutely destroy it <laughs> make it look like it's been stolen and burnt out but that's it guys that's the um, the basics for this just finish up adding bits of like and a bit of flock along the edges there it just helps embed the fence make it look situated and established and of course we're going to fasten it down with a bit more PVA water mix and there we have it that should set us off nicely And again, we're just putting some bushes and weeds on the back side of the fence. Even though the camera isn't going to see it too often, it's just nice to know that it's there. Just in case the camera does catch it. Now we just wait for this whole thing to dry. About 12 hours or so should be enough. Right then, that's the main bits done. We've got the underbrush in there, the main dress, the base of dirt and what have you, the walls. Retrospectively, I should have put this wall in after, like I did with that wall but once all this is dry i'm going to go over it again with the weathering powders anyway so you won't be able to tell i think it looks pretty good we could get a burnt out car on there some rubbish it'll look pretty nice get a wall up here just to separate that side of the layout looking pretty nice i quite like that not bad at all right folks the uh hopefully we should have another video up for you on wednesday a few more updates and a bit of a running session as well. Till then, take care. And if you feel the mood take you, please like and subscribe. Cheers.